So hello and welcome to Frankly with College Vidya episode 3. Today on our show we have a very special guest. So she is a cyber security professional and she is also my childhood buddy. Uh to introduce her I would say that she radiates positivity. Uh she is an experienced individual who has worked with uh, the big four. Previously she was with PwC and currently she is working with KPMG in Dubai. So without wasting much time let's get into the video and let's talk to her and ask some question uh, you know which would help you choosing the right career path for yourself and to know more about what cyber security profession has and what it holds and what what exactly is the ground reality of that profession so hello bhavya <laughs> how do you feel to you know i think this is a interview on a video call so i think it's more relaxing If you would have been here in front of me, I think that would have been better, or or this is better. What what which what was something that you would prefer? I think uh, from my perspective, I feel that in person interviews or you know conversations in general are better, and uh, these virtual meetings help us you know uh, connect from different geographies. But it doesn't have yeah. that human touch for sure. Like and and yeah. even while you're working, I feel like when you're working with different people. across geographies you are able to do that you know in no time and you don't need so all that new nuances don't come into the picture of people traveling and stuff but when you actually meet people in person you are able to connect really well and that's what yeah you know uh, kind of makes us human and these virtual meetings are kind of taking it away because we are meeting but we are not meeting but yeah, <laughs> everything has its own pros but i think but but we had no options I mean, you were in Dubai, so yes. we had to do it this way. Maybe someday you can fly so, over and take them. The yeah, so man, so, sometimes you can fly back to India, and then we can have a you know one-on-one -on -one conversation. Absolutely. Okay, so, let's get into this uh, entire segment. I mean, uh, we have called you on our show to you know solve a lot of queries that students have basically, and they do not know about this profession entirely, and they do not know how to enter this profession. So. Uh, give us a, a, a introduction of on cyber security and you know what are the spe specializations into it and you know what a, in a lame in a lame way so that you know everybody in the simplest possible way. okay okay so mm -hmm. thanks thanks first of all for inviting me here it's a pleasure to be here and be able to you know talk about what i do on a daily basis and uh, impart that whatever knowledge i have to other people and uh, maybe it helps even if it helps one person i'm glad if i can be of any help and to get started i'll first of all start like give a little introduction about myself so hello everyone my name is bhavya and uh, i have uh, so i got into cyber security security approximately 3 three years back and uh, i would say it was kind of a coincidence and i just landed into this the uh, you know uh, field but i'm so glad and i'm i'm so glad i'm here now and uh, i don't think that you know i could have uh, i would not change a thing whatever happened to me while i was how you started like uh, how, what was your first step to this profession i would say so it's really funny actually because uh, while i was in like i, I am actually a pharma btech graduate and uh, while do, doing my engineering i hated coding and i kind of told my dad that you know i i really hated coding because and i think when i went towards so uh, advanced java and things like that debugging became a pain and i was like you know what i'm not doing it because i had that creative inclination which i just inherently have and uh, when mm -hmm. i got into subjects like marketing and i really liked writing and you know uh, i i started uh, finding that more interesting and i kind of told everyone that you know i'm not going to pursue a, yeah. i'm not going to be an engineer i don't see myself like that this is me in my second or third year of college because i i just didn't see myself doing it you know sitting mm. doing a daily job and coding that was just not me and yeah. what now i understand a lot of people are like that i just had that uh, out there that you know i'm not going to do this because mm. i want to be in a domain where I mean, I like my job, and I like only if I like it will I grow in it. I just knew that. Like, yeah, yeah. Even as a kid, we all know it, right? If you don't like so it, so when did that click to you that you want to get into this? Like, when was cyber. the time that you act? Yeah, cyber was just a coincidence, I would say. So it was yeah. during my placements. So the so we have like phases of our placements, right? So it starts from mm -hmm. days ago. So a lot of companies started coming in, 
and a lot of yeah. product companies started coming in who wanted developers and i would i was so weird like i'm so stubborn i feel i did not apply for those jobs like you have to apply right you just don't right uh. those notices used to come in and flow in and i'm like you know what I, i'm just not going to go there and mm-hmm. i so i think the first company which i was actually interested in was deloitte because they kind of hire for consultant roles and my understanding yeah. then was that you know you don't need to be a coder even and now that i understand like even consultants have like you know consulting is just a very generic term and consultants yeah. can do thousands of things so when you're thousands of different you're, tasks you're, de- you're developing certain things but when you're a consultant you are helping organize uh, organizations into tons and millions of things so there's no end to it and at that point right. of time i understood that you know you don't need to be a coder to get there so it was deloitte and the first company that i was interested in and i actually made it till the last round and in the last round ironically i was asked a dynamic programming question so the people the people who are from engineering would understand that you know so you have basic programming questions and dynamic programming you need to come up with your algorithm and you know it takes some time to develop that and mm-hmm. the interviewer told me and i'm so glad today that you know i didn't make it i am so <laughs> glad like you know we we all think like Uh, that all the rejection yeah. actually uh, help you get where you need to be and want to be and where yeah, you actually uh, where you actually uh, you know deserve to be and things like that so i didn't make it and i think people yeah. land up at the best places coincidentally and you know they never i mean a lot of actors that you uh, listen to and they tell you about the journey they often tell that they never wanted to become an actor <laughs> they have become that kind of that's a big loop so right so, and i think that that's what you're trying to tell me here uh, like about your journey yeah so you know? i i was always a very creative person and i i saw myself like that you know being into sales mm-hmm. and marketing rather than being a technical person and eventually i didn't but i think you are acing your game you are in dubai right now i mean people dream of you know reaching to dubai working there i mean uh, लोग घूमने जाते हैं यार तुम वहां पे काम कर रही हो एंड यू आर अर्निंग प्रीटी वेल यू आर वर्किंग विद केपीएमजी दैट्स लाइक अ बिग फोर सो आई थिंक आई मीन दैट दैट्स समथिंग टू चेरिश आई थिंक आई मीन सो द ओनली थिंग दैट आई हैव लर्न इन द पास्ट 3 इयर्स दैट आई हैव वर्क्ड एक्चुअली इज इफ यू लाइक व्हाट यू डू यू विल ग्रो लाइक यू नो एवरी डे व्हेन यू शो अप एट work you won't feel like you're working because you enjoy what you're doing and that is what matters the most and uh, it doesn't it doesn't hit you when you start working on so i i just just going back and you know rewinding a little bit so i got placed into pwc into cyber domain and i used to read a lot so i knew tech like i used to read right so i could correlate mm-hmm. things as to okay uh, mm-hmm. you know with every new technology that's coming in how exactly do we make it secure and when the interviews happened i was able to talk about it and so i just like ended in pwc and when i went there actually like you know in my office and the first questions i the first question i was asked i was kind of an interview was taken and the first question that was asked to me uh, was do you want to get into blue team or red team i didn't know a thing about cyber security so i was yeah. like there okay what to do i was like okay, give me some time to <laughs> make this decision because i need some what time. is a blue team and a red team i had no idea like i'm just where you are right like no problem like, okay so when we think mm-hmm. of cyber security um, you know from someone who's not in the domain it seems like <laughs> this is just another domain like development that's what we right. think right but cyber itself there are so many different st- streams to it so uh, i was coming to that yeah, yeah give so, us a detail what what specialization and what different departments does that uh, hold like cyber security is such a big and a huge uh, yeah, you know yeah in itself absolutely. so can you bifurcate it for us i can try to so at large if you talk about red teaming and blue teaming and in in very like you know common terms so red teamers of uh predominantly hackers so okay. what they do is uh, when they have an agreement or you know like a yeah agreement with the client the client wants them to break in into their environment and uh, like you know just like an attacker to simulate the whole attack uh, uh attack life cycle and help them identify okay. vulnerability so their task is kind of to break in 
so that would be the okay. better side of things but when you talk about blue team right? that's this is a very large picture again because even in red team there's so many types of things when you talk Obviously, about yeah. breaking in there could you mm. could break into network mobile phones web applications if, like there are specializations there as well yeah. but when you come towards the blue teaming side of things so this would be uh, predominantly helping organizations stay safe and this okay. can be bifurcated into two different uh, types of things one would be uh, on the technical side like you know where you're actually uh, developing or uh, deploying certain tools to proactively so there are many things uh, when mm. you talk about blue teaming one thing is proactively looking into you know so let's say you have there's an organization and they want to know at all like you know in real time what's happening and what are the threats and everything that is proactive monitoring to identify what's okay. happening in real time and in case yeah. there's a breach that comes into the picture and uh, something which has already happened then usually forensics comes into the picture okay so, and that comes under the blue teaming yeah it, it comes in blue teaming itself so uh there is incident response there's digital forensics which comes after incident response i i have a question regarding this right now yeah. so what if like i i hold an organization and something happens you know some cyber threat or something that you know virus or something happen okay i don't know uh, the uh, words to say it but uh, so whom whom shall i contact like uh, what what do i need to do what is the first step that i need to go through if, if i am facing a cyber threat as an organization not as an individual okay so organizations usually have a lot of policies and procedures in their place in in place for them so they have mm-hmm. an information security manual ispm as they call it and they already i mean it's a, it's the best practice that you know you need to have you, it's a must have rather than a good to have uh, process so it's highly recommended for organizations to already be prepared rather than you know so you are like a step ahead from the attackers rather than once an attack has already happened you are you you're like okay now what to do so a lot of companies like the big fours are there to you know and uh, to help you out basically but for, so it's also different for all uh, various geo locations so when we talk about let's say us or europe so europe for example has a, a policy policy or maybe i am yeah it's it's a policy so you call it gdpr mm. and okay. what that kind of states is if there's any breach that has happened you know uh, any sort of pii like a personally identifiable information which has gone out uh, mm-hmm. of any customer residing in europe you know by the yeah. organization so the organization mm. is liable to pay uh, to let the authorities know that this has happened within 72 yeah. hours of the breach happening but within the 72 hours of them knowing that the breach has happened otherwise okay. there's like a huge amount of fine fines that you know organizations have to pay and uh, that's how so it's also different for uh, you know a lot of exactly so i was coming to uh, the point where like i stay in india and our viewers are from india mostly so for them like if if any organization or for that matter let like, keep the organization aside um, if any individual is facing any cyber threat what should be our first step individual what how yeah so an individual working in a firm or just like um uh, i would say an individual normally because uh, i think internet is a big world today and a lot of people face a lot of uh, cyber threat each day i know it's not completely something related to your work but i just wanted to ask you this what a person can do or should do what should their first step be if you know so they if- face any cyber threat so just just to i think uh, in india what you can do is if there is something which is kind of bothering you and you know somebody is threatening you and things like that and you feel like um, you need to report this to someone so the best person the best people to go to is the police because they do have a cyber division who is trying to you know step up and help people and uh, okay. I think that's the best place to go because. But even you know uh, how uh, our police official kind of, and system is slow. I would say. It is. Yeah, they would. Um, but but on a personal level, what should a person do? Firstly, if depends also uh, on what happened. Depends on what happened. Yeah, and that that's true. So, <laughs> okay, I have another thing that I can ask you related to this. If um I am see the uh, cafe work culture is on a hike. 
everybody is right now working in either a cafe or on a work uh, vocation uh, in you know that sort of place so we generally uh, log into a wifi that's public or that's there and i think that uh, creates a lot of um, hindrance to our privacy and you know a lot of data is out there um, which can be breached i feel so how can i be safe with using that public service but i i still want to keep my devices safe or myself safe from any cyber threat that could happen i know i'm not a celebrity uh, you know that somebody would hack on my own phone but still i mean uh, uh, data breaching is a big thing so what uh, do you have anything to say on that i think you have a very good point there that you know we all need to be aware of how much yeah. uh, data we, we uh, that is kind of outside you know and uh, we we all think that you know what what's going to happen but you really don't know what's going to happen and we have exactly. seen very small small mistakes from people leading to huge attacks on organizations so when you let's say you know you are an individual you have your personal life i agree but when you you are actually associated with certain organization i know this won't be applicable to people who are not working for firms but in general you know how do you maintain that hygiene so that's very yeah. very important and i really like the point that you are you know highlighting so first of all i would highly recommend everyone not to not use public wifi because you don't know who's out there don't use right. it or even if you want to maybe you know have your own vpn and connect to the tunnel so having the vpn on uh, helps you have like you know your uh, all your data is in like encrypted channel and everything so nobody can okay. get into it like or or just like have uh, packets and packet filtering and analysis uh, do the uh, particular analysis so that might help you a little bit but preferably don't use it have okay. your own hotspot whatever is required small things mm-hmm. and and also about the house for something i re- realized recently i was on a flight and yeah i so but this is very recent i think last week when i was traveling to dubai and uh, i was in the flight i had not switched the sim okay and i needed like internet mm. just scanning okay wifi and i found mm. somebody's and i was like okay i i just like brute forcing okay finding okay one to eight i was able to access internet and i'm just like <laughs> people still use it <laughs> it still works right so, we all talk about password complexity but the very sp- like okay fine you know you have you're having all these complex pa- complex passwords in your email accounts mm-hmm. but what about your hotspots yeah like very small I, I was just i was just scrolling through youtube and i, I found a video where i saw uh, there was a guy who was 12 years old and he's a hacker in texas okay and he was the common people about you know he could easily hack anybody's phone i mean you just have to use his wifi and then he could uh, hack your mobile phone your whatsapp your uh, all uh, application and you know that that's so easy <laughs> so he was making it seem so easy so so that is some i mean it's tricky it's not really very easy at this point of time but you know if we are all aware of what we are doing like i gave the you know this circling back to my previous example where you have right. like a very easy password one to it we all do it because you know whenever we have to give an hotspot we just like one to it but mm. it's so generic everybody knows about it so we need to make sure that you know we inculcate all these habits where uh, we are kind mm-hmm. of having complex passwords and certain set of com- we keep changing also our complex passwords that's also a very important thing because you don't know sometime you uh, log into dominoes and that got breached and you just yeah. know, just give an example so the the password went away so just keep switching everything and uh, that's kind of a huge uh, cyber hygiene in itself that you can interact. how do you keep yourself safe i mean you're working for such a big company like how what are the three things that you follow to keep your devices and your uh, you know things safe first of all having your own internet uh, whatsoever like you know even if you need mm. hotspot or anything having your vpn on these are the two things having complex passwords everywhere so complex that now my earlier somebody I- who has a low memory power what what do they do when able to log into my previous iphone it's all dead now because of the complex password i don't remember <laughs> so there there's a whole triad right where you talk about functionality usability and security and whenever yeah. somebody so all of these softwares that you look at these all three mm. factors have to be inculcated to see how the user experience really is and if you uh, you know divert a lot towards uh, security and functionality mm. and usability might take a hit and 
So things like that, you have to maintain that balance so that the triangle is equilateral and not isosceles at any point of time. So, yeah. Sure, we'll try. <laughs> and hopefully the viewers will also try, you know, keeping in mind whatever you shared with us. Yeah. Okay, um, we, we literally got distracted to the point. I was, I was about to ask you, what are the specific course or subject that you need to opt for to get into cybersecurity profession? A lot of students wanted to know this and they asked this question in the community poll. So yeah, if you could answer that. So I totally get the point because even while I was in college, when somebody would say the hacking, I would just be like, dude, that's impossible, right? That's all we all, that's what we all think. And I totally agree that, you know, you need to kickstart from somewhere. So there are only, and I, the having a background in engineering kind of helps because we are, so the, the subjects that are important would be computer networks, operating systems, and uh, obviously programming. These okay. are the three programming language. Mein kya? What are the programming anything? Language? So it also depends on, you know, what you want to do. So let's say you want to get into bug bounty where you are, you know, finding bugs in web applications and a lot of organizations actually pay you a lot of bug bounty bounty for finding bugs. And uh, for that, so in case you want to I'll just give a, you know, very simple example to help you understand why I'm saying this, why coding is important is even if you don't code, you need to understand what the code says, right? To, so like, right. let's say there's a web application. If you don't know what it's doing, how will you find the bug in it, right? So yeah. you first need to understand the fundamentals. So when you're looking at, let's say you're looking at hacking into, into a cell phone, for example, you need to know mm -hmm. everything about the cell phone to hack into it, or at least to yeah. some extent, right? Mm -hmm. If you understand certain sections of it, then you know, okay, this is what I know. And I'll try right. to see uh, if these sort of vulnerabilities are there or not. So that mm -hmm. applies to everything. When you talk about networks. So, uh, yeah. So don't you think so? Like uh, when you're saying, uh, like when you, are, when you want to get into hacking, these are the subjects, like you need to know the programming languages and you need to be aware of these subjects and obviously engineering uh, uh, background helps but what if somebody wants to get into non-technical as we were talking earlier also you discussed about you know having a non-technical and technical profile in cyber security like in the profession that you are in so what about the non-technical thing uh, like person like me who has done a broadcast journalism can some uh, somebody like me uh, turn into a cyber security profession or can i can i get into absolutely i feel like you know today so the, just to diverge a little bit uh, earlier in earlier times, you know, you had to go to college and, you know, get that degree to get into a job. Yeah. But today, yeah. because of the evolving landscape and, you know, we're mm -hmm. all studying online. We don't really have yeah. to, go. even if we went to college, we all studied online. So, I mean, YouTube is everything, everything that you want to know and learn is there. So if you want to learn. And College Vidya provides online courses, so you can go to our website. <laughs> so, I mean, this, okay. this it's everywhere. Like if you want to study operating systems, you can study from uh, professors from IIT and, you know, MIT and whatnot. Just, just go on YouTube completely. and you're like, okay. So you just need that few things to know that, you know, mm -hmm. this is what I need to study. And then mm -hmm. just, so also, uh, because cyber is a very huge domain, first of right. all, and, and actually to get in, so talking about the non-tech side a little bit later, I think there's something which is very important, which uh, very few people talk about. And that's uh, your personal, like, you know, interpersonal skills and your soft skills matter a lot in terms of, and not just cybersecurity, but every uh, job that you're doing at large. So like for me, I got started into digital forensics and I didn't know a thing about it. I did not, right? But uh, mm. I had a few... Uh, you know, like, uh, I was just very curious all the time. And I used to ask a lot of yeah. questions. So that kind of yeah. helped me understand that, okay. And I also had certain amount of patience uh, when it, and because I was like, very, very curious where, when there is an incident that has happened, and there are only certain set of questions that you need to ask, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. How did the attacker get in? You know, the initial mm. access point, how, what was the main vulnerability which was exploited? Was it a person or was it a vulnerability in the uh, machine? And then how did he propagate? How did he exfiltrate information from the machine? And finally, what happened? Like, you know, to understand the entire attack life cycle, 
you you have to mm. ask a lot of questions and if you right. know your operating system you know right like in a right manner you understand how a file system works and where things are stored and you know where are the certain points where you can get this information from you need to have yeah. patience but you also need to be curious and have that mindset okay this is how it's happening but why does it happen mm-hmm. so those yeah. are, those personal skills also come into a picture when you are deciding what you want to get into in cyber in general yeah. because if you have like so both actually everything in cyber requires patience but <laughs> patience to take into something and mm-hmm. the patience to find what uh, you know someone did to break into it is different any any case that you want to talk about that you have uh, solved in your entire career till now and you are very proud of it or you know anything that you want to share with students and working professional watching this mostly it's confidential and i can't talk about it but uh, mm. a lot of my experience yet has gone into working on ra- ransomware uh, uh, attacks and mm. uh, i think there was a period during covid especially because since uh, covid started and because yeah. of the whole remote working uh, operating system operating uh, a lot of organizations because they looked at functionality and usability more than security a lot of organizations got hit with ransomware attacks in yeah. and i think mm-hmm. there's a study where every 4 minutes one organization getting hit by a ransomware attack and to talk about ransomware give a little understanding yeah unlike every incident where you know you just know that you know you got breached and uh, like it's kind of stealthy you don't know what what's happening right if somebody has mm. it he's not going to come 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 and tell yeah. you okay i'm going to you now i'm going to go <laughs> that's what going to happen what happens in ransomware if your machine has got uh, you know infected for example so all your user files are going to be encrypted and you will not be able to access any of it unless you pay a certain amount so like you know how kidnapping used to work ransom yeah. like attack yeah. or uh, kidnappers used to take ransom from uh, family yeah. it's the same way how and ransomware uh, threat actors across the globe it's almost like a business they operate mm-hmm. so we think it's a one or two people but it's literally no. a business and mm-hmm. uh, so they need to take uh, you know you need to pay sort of the amount of ransom it's like blackmailing dude <laughs> it is absolutely and it has gone up like crazy i mean i'm it's just just like massive i've been recently working to you know help organizations create that flow as to in mm-hmm. okay now that you've got hit how do you exactly navigate the entire process because when you're hit by a ransomware attack it's going to be going to be a huge like a very complex process because not one person in your organization not just the, it's not just the it people or you know the service man like it's going to be your legal and compliance and communication yeah. because you need to like how much time does it uh, take to solve one such issue i mean it's such an ongoing thing you must be working on two three projects at a time i feel it used to happen in my earlier organizations a lot because uh, i was kind of like on the for- forefront and i was at that and even till like now i am a digital forensics sme so organizations usually come to me when something bad has happened already and many a times as you correctly mentioned that you know we had two three different ransomware attacks two three different clients uh, yeah. you know getting hit but uh, the time taken to recover depends on how ready the organization is and okay. you know absolutely absolutely it because specifically when you talk about ransomware in case you know you have your backup and recovery uh, uh, process in place and it's been tested and tried so many times that uh, your muscle memory is already built and in case you're hit by a ransomware attack the teams the exact teams uh, know what to do at the right amount uh, right right time and you know you can right. just bring him uh, bring them into the picture and you can always go back to the last known good state mm-hmm. instead of going and paying that amount to the ransomware yeah. attack actor but there's one more catch here ransomware is uh threat actors not just to encrypt but there's a, a latest trend where they also ex- mm-hmm. exfiltrate information right so they can just what they do is usually go on the dark web and post that you know uh this has been leaked now and mm. for them like they kind of uh, tell you that you know it's called double extortion uh, they will mm-hmm. also like they will encrypt they will exfiltrate and they will ask for more money to uh, stop them from like uh, posting 
uh, that you know the order no, on some else yeah, because that yeah. not only has uh, financial and business impact but also a huge huge reputational imp- impact on organizations because uh, the customers and users don't trust them anymore mostly right i have a very important question coming in my head sorry to interrupt you here but uh, don't you think so like um, uh, big data and you know uh, like the industry uh, that has built works on data like data selling is a huge market today i mean uh, i don't know much about it um, honestly speaking but uh, this is something that is getting on trend i think uh, how do you think is it like safe like the industry that's building up what do you have to say on that like what are your thoughts on data selling in um, how do you think data is working data selling obviously it's a huge aspect and don't you think that infringes our privacy and you know who gets the right to sell up uh, data like and why i know i know how are people making money on this too much money i mean cyber warfare is a thing today and you know we are not really aware about it but when you actually on ground and see things happening it's kind of very dark all the dark web for a reason yeah that that's true uh, but do you have anything to say on the data selling and do you have any insight on that matter obviously has to be more regulated and it's very difficult to regulate too and one very good thing that is coming up now is uh, a lot of this just going back to the ransomware threat actors is now they're getting t- caught most of them and uh, you know their entire business is actually going down and law enforcement across the globe is you know trying to game up and actually fight back so earlier mm-hmm. when it started so it's a very recent trend i think since it started probably around um 10 years back or something but since covid happened it has uh, gotten like like you know it's increased exponentially mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. uh, talking about a very latest uh, recent event is uh, mm-hmm. one ransomware threat actor called lapsus was at its peak and every week you know uh, they and uh, like it's very funny and scary at the same time uh, yeah. so lapsus was uh, you know they had their hall of uh, defame <laughs> it wouldn't be hall of fame or something but like they used to talk about so giants were getting like they were literally talking about leaking uh, you know information from giants like i mean i don't want to name them at this point of time but yeah. like huge organizations and they actually got caught i think uh, last week or 10 10 days back and it was a bunch of 16 year teenagers all of them and imagine uh, you know 16 year olds coming into the picture and just thrashing yeah. such security processes and exactly huge companies of companies mm-hmm. who sell security in the first place exactly so, i mean that's the point to get worried about i mean absolutely if, absolutely <laughs> that was so we're many hackers happy. are coming up where are normal people going to stay <laughs> we're all we're all so if you look at it you know we like uh, since knowledge is available everywhere right you can use it constructively or in a very destructive manner too so it depends manner. on who is choosing what and we need to yeah. spread this awareness that you know think about it if these 16 year olds you know went ahead and uh, or uh, this became bug bounty hunters but th- there's also this one factor when you're actually um, in like you know you're working as so you, there are, there are good guys and the bad guys right the good yeah. guys don't get paid as much as the bad guys do that's true so i mean the world is unfair What, <laughs> with with that with getting being getting paid i would like to ask you i mean nobody answers this question but i will be really glad if you do okay so what is the average salary <laughs> one gets paid in 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 your uh, cyber security industry yeah i i think now what is the salary that you will get and what is the top most of the highest salary that one can achieve now that's a very tricky question but i it's so not tricky <laughs> it, it is i'll tell you why because uh, just in the last one year things have improved so much because of the increasing attacks people understand you know how much it's important and cyber in general has a huge shortage of skill because if you skilled you work for organizations like let's say you're a technical person 
you work for organizations mm. and you will be expected to not just be technical but also have a lot of other skills to eventually grow you need to be patient yeah. right you will grow because of your skills but there is a certain amount of patience required to grow in an organization but when you are on your own like you know you are you are your you are your own boss you are a freelance hacker absolutely absolutely so um it depends see if you you are freelancing then you know uh, i mean there's no just one way to go a lot of times it depends on your performance depends on who you work with and i highly recommend people to uh, so there's one more thing i would like to highlight here sure. i think i'm going I, i'll address a pay aspect later because there is no number that i can state because as a beginner if you can uh, tell us uh, what is a beginner's salary like if somebody just enters and have no knowledge how much does a beginner gets paid depends on average i'm not it depends see if you don't know anything how you much have you have you have been a graduate uh, from kit okay um what was your colleague and your uh, average uh, salary at that time when you begin okay so the, okay just talking about myself i think i when i was interning i was making 25 grand a month that's mm-hmm. my internship salary that was the basic salary people get Yeah, and, and it's pretty much the same. Like the average salary is going to be the average salary of an right. engineer. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's no like one. But as you grow with an experience, you can demand according to your skill. Absolutely. So not just experience. See, uh, experience at this point of time, it's also you know how much time you spend on your own to upskill mm-hmm. yourself. Right. and while you are in the firm you obviously learning but mm-hmm. having a growth mindset and helping others learn too so people who right. are below you and also above you because i'll tell you something mm. when you have fresh brains you know working a lot of new ideas start you know coming exactly. in exactly i really agree and that's this, a yeah. very very like you know a very uh, like it's just a fresh start so it's amazing to have new people but obviously mm. if new people have the skill set they will be paid more right if you already mm-hmm. prepared for the industry and no college curriculum is going to prepare you for the industry it's all you how okay. well do you know the uh, you know networks how well do you and you know you have all of these courses even if you go in the yeah like, you know start any course, course that you would like to recommend i mean just you like uh, with working or with studying is there anything that one should go through or one should do a course regarding to it anything in specific depends on again what you're choosing that you know okay i want to be ha- be a hacker then so if you want to let's say get into uh, hacking for example you'll uh, let's talk about bug bounty only and i'm okay. I'm, a, i'm not a bug bounty hunter but this is what i what i understand you need to understand how an, how web applications work starting mm-hmm. that's the starting point and mm-hmm. there's a lot of books like there's this book called the web application hackers handbook and you know there are a lot of books available study the books understand the base you know because if you don't understand the base reality of what's there you will not be able mm-hmm. to crack it even if you like let's say you're uh, actually uh, looking for a bug you will start going back into into your fundamentals so you having your fundamentals strong yeah. is key to everything and if you have that you will be like it's easy it's just easier for you right mm-hmm. like if you didn't know the multiplication tables how would you, how would yeah. you do advanced mathematics so it's, it's pretty much like that and Any for book course, that you would like to recommend book so yeah i mean there are a lot of books available so like let's say for web application the web application hackers handbook that's like the bible everybody reads it but that's what it is right it, you you need to understand the ground reality too and then having okay. some patience so you have a lot of uh, uh, i think there is a, not getting bug crowd is one where you know so a lot of companies are listed there and they are there are like acceptable terms and conditions as to what are the different kind of things you can you know look into bugs you can look, look into and accordingly get yeah. it requires a lot and i think this is a never solving uh, industry i feel uh, new things keeps coming up i feel it's like a medical field where you discover new diseases you discover new spyware actually, you've made a great reference actually i used to say that you know we are er doctors yeah. especially when i was in digital forensics and student response yeah. it every day used to feel like being an er doctor and it was fun 
because every day when i walk walk into work there is something new i'm looking at and learning because there's yeah. a new device new issue and there's just so much to learn and you know if you if you're working in this industry you have to have patience and you are learning on a daily basis like you know research so having those skills that you know if i, if I should put a disclaimer of patience over here so she has mentioned like patience in number of times so please absolutely. students have patience if and you want to get into this for everything right whatever you're working in uh, i think today the world in general has become like everybody wants quick money everybody wants it especially with youtube and tiktok and you know the whole content creation game coming into the picture yeah. and the 12 year olds becoming millionaires it's just become crazy for all of us we feel like you yeah. know what are we doing with our lives but it is so- making the hustle culture a lot uh, you know like we're not living i feel sometimes yeah, we're hustling too much i mean everybody wants to reach at some point of place and you know i mean in in between in the process of it i think nobody is uh, literally living i mean they're just you know trying to reach somewhere see there is this one more factor that comes into the so having a vision for yourself that you know this is what i want to do a lot of people we need to like you know you need to have that vision for yourself that this is what i want to do or this is yeah. the kind of person i want to become but in the yeah. process you have to enjoy every day and every moment that okay oh my god i learned this new thing i learned this new strategy that you can you know talk about and help others and you have to enjoy but that i want to say something about you in this i have seen you evolving like immensely and i think you're a better person like not just uh, flattering you because you're here <laughs> i'm just genuinely saying this uh, i have seen you evolve a lot and uh, i have i've seen you get into spirituality a lot uh, i mean if you want to talk about it if you want to you know grace us with some knowledge on spirituality and you know how can one person keep a balance of life and work together um, go ahead absolutely i think uh, <laughs> that's what keeps me sane because work is anyway insane for me mostly yeah so how do you uh, enjoy it absolutely i think that is something uh, spirituality in general and i was actually like you know how i was early i was like one very rebellious person and then i got into and i had no patience whatsoever i was also <laughs> and you are here in the street oh no patience <laughs> so it's funny and you know i feel like the more you run away from certain things in your life the more they come to you the yes. more they're going to come to you and you better just like be like okay this is what it is just brace yeah. it enjoy it and i feel like you know like i just i just mentioned earlier that you know i was totally non tech and i got into this uh, completely tech i think i cried for two weeks straight every every day after work i used to cry like oh my god what's happening but then one day it hit me that you know what you have six months so i was scared because i had a six months internship come ppo and i i'm just giving this these examples to help you understand what what went with me and yeah i was in denial that you know i don't want to do this i mean i'm not meant for this this is not my thing mm. but after a point i realized that you know what is there to do you have to do these six months and you if you're anyway spending this these six months just, just spend your time and see if you can do it yeah see if you can do it what can you make out of it and i'm so glad and having you know certain people who are there to help you out and guide you is very 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 important in whatever domain you're working in having gurus right. like you know how in earlier times uh, kids used to go to gurukul and have a guru and teach them that yes. is so relevant i feel today in every aspect okay. of my life not just i think i need to a few moments later so the yeah, so just to get back to what i was saying was uh, yeah i i just realized that you know if i am spending 6 months might as well just learn something out of it and it was right. very funny and it's also how life you know just brings you to that spot and when i realized when i was working in industrial forensics so like i feel like i was about to be kicked out because i didn't know a thing about it right but mm. uh, there was this one lady who was a uh, you know ready your guru me. yeah absolutely and she helped me so much you know i had like very lame doubts all the time she had the people are, all people are not lucky to have a guru also absolutely absolutely you you need 
there is hard work but there is also luck to have that sort of people at that right amount of time to help you guide you because if there was no one guiding me i would have just been like okay mba now but uh, <laughs> i mean there there were few things i think few qualities like i'll just talk about one example where i was given a piece of work this is like my first or second week of work and uh, okay. so she was kind of overburdened i feel and uh, she was like you know what just look at these web application logs and i had some uh, background in web application development so she was like oh, you know apache starts right okay just ha- have a look at these logs and tell me what happened what happened on the state and mm. i started looking at the logs and i was like okay the state something happened but uh, same scripts were used like 6 7 months back and much more was exfiltrated at that uh, exfiltrated at that point of time so i started asking mm-hmm. her questions and i was like so fresh and you know how, how like i was very rebellious and everything i was like okay um something happened on 14 and 15 but before like you know diverging the answers to her so i asked her questions mm-hmm. like how do you know this happened on 14 and 15 who told the class <laughs> happened on like you know you started asking her questions <laughs> and like i remember we both had monitors you know and you just like people and like how do you know like i don't think so because you know same script was used six months back and so much more happened mm-hmm. this was just like a test run which kind of happened yeah. and who told the client that you know this is happening i feel like whoever informed the client did it like i just said it out there that because how do you have exact date and time stamp how is a regulator having it right if you think about it in common sense <laughs> and she was like yeah. you're right then she, i started looking i sh- start showing her i was like see this is the script that was used and long back the script was used to exfiltrate much more and at this point of time this particular time frame that you're talking about this was run just for the sake of it mm. and she was like okay let me go back and <laughs> this that was something uh... very interestingly you cracked that yeah it was very funny and actually it came out to be too the true the regulator was true so, yeah. yeah and so i mean you need I to mean, have... you always need to be curious i mean i think one uh, patients i think uh, another thing is you have to be curious to get into cyber security i cyber mean you have to have that i think it's a life hack whatever you're doing yeah, yeah. completely <laughs> It is a so being time. curious i would like to ask you another question <laughs> okay uh, we we got distracted when you were talking about gurus um uh, acha but you were giving me the same example of you know you know just like people used to have gurus at the old times you need to have gurus right now you know to guide you to the right path uh, absolutely okay, so so one more thing i have to that like to point there is obviously have yeah. people to guide you but have hmm. your own vision as to what and who you want to become what do you mm, want you should not get swayed away to their vision no also way, no way, no way. you need to have mm. your own uh, set of you know uh, values and ideas as to where do you see yourself because you know because i feel sometimes seniors you know try to sway you to their direction maybe to get help from you absolutely they do not really think about you but yeah that's that's about it so uh, i was about to ask you on a personal level uh, like as an individual if a person wants to keep safe uh, i think i i asked you about this but um, you know he says that um, cyber crimes do not only happen with people who are aware but are technical or are technically handicapped but if if even if we see the data 59% of the youth have been threatened digitally and more than 139 cases are reported every day this question is coming from a journalist by the way Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you think we can make more and more people aware of the incidences and how can we help people talk about it openly and you know because a lo- lot of small little crimes i would not say small little that's such a wrong way to say it but you know certain incidences that are not at a huge scale but on a personal level happens with everyone on a regular basis you know how can you avoid that i mean how do you re- how how do you report it how do you avoid it if you have an answer to that so so I mean I obviously don't have an I don't think anyone has an answer to that but what helps is you so you know on a personal level let's say I try to make sure that most people that I come across I try to help them be aware a little more aware if not everything I tell them you know don't click on random links don't give your passwords don't talk when you many times it happens right like speak to these sitting a little far and then I'll be like okay yeah that's uh, mango at the rate one to three is my password just talking you don't oh yeah so mm-hmm. you need to we often do that 
a lot of people do that so you have to make sure that you know it's a practice like you have to inculcate that in yourself that you know uh it's right. a password i'm not going to divulge that into uh, to every anyone whatsoever and uh, no random links as i earlier mentioned don't click on links and also places that take your numbers dude like they take your number and then like yeah we'll send you a mail we'll send you coupons we'll send you this you know so uh, i think we need to keep two sims for that <laughs> sims don't think for, i mean i i give give fake numbers everywhere and you know <laughs> mostly most every well, somebody wants to reach you babya <laughs> what is the urgency of reaching me <laughs> that can be i mean oh, let's not go into a person context so to close to me they already have my number if they need me yeah, that's if true. they don't they don't have it and when you talk about emails you can also have one email which is just for that sort of stuff i do have that in place so you know yeah me too and you can also <laughs> go into proton mail have your uh, email id not on gmail and if you want to mm-hmm. make it more let me more safe and things like that many times certain things i also do is use use a lot of temp so if you just look for temp- temporary email ids and if you need to sign up for something use those instead of yours so mm-hmm. limit how what all places you use your personal email id which you use let's say for your yeah. banks for example yeah. so yeah so that's how you can kind of save save yourself mm-hmm. and on a personal level it's a responsibility for each of us who are aware to let everyone who's not be more aware about it Yeah. yeah that's if that answers i think that's all we can do <laughs> okay let's move on it does answer like partially but obviously i think the solution is get not out there that you will give me a solution over it nobody so, nobody knows what to do so yeah. all a personal thing mm-hmm. so uh, if somebody wants to report a cyber crime and they say that often the government website do not work and people do not know what to do next so what is the correct way to report it has to be the police who is supposed to help you and otherwise like let's say you've had an issue on instagram report it to instagram instagram for one or facebook is very quick at helping you out i feel 30 days <laughs> i think it takes uh, so uh, there is nothing online that we can uh, there's no online uh, website or uh, any place where we can directly get cyber help it's only is the there any organization like that that works not really it's the police you can go uh, reach out to to report who's going to help you maybe but uh, there's no like one way or one person or one regulator you can reach out to it's only law enforcement if you want to go that way but even if you go that way it's very difficult to find who did that to you so it's it's tricky now it's getting better because uh, mm-hmm. law enforcement is obviously getting better at you know catching uh, the bad guys but uh, it's tricky i know there's no one one place you can go a lot of times a lot of my friends reach out to me like what am i supposed to do i try to help yeah. as i can but that's all we can do there's no one place where we but can. you can't help me regarding applications that i'm working because obviously you would need some uh, you are already working for a company so you can't uh, just uh, jump into another uh, work i mean you must be having a limitation right absolutely we all do we, we just can't but yeah, as much exactly. as i can i can try to help you out that's it's all mm-hmm. we can do but yeah there's no there's no regulator there's no one place you can go to i mean the max you can go i mean is, that's sad that's i mean sad. in such a big country like india we should have something like that i know i'm being idealistic over here but i feel no i think the cyber cell in delhi specifically is quite good because i personally know some people who are working there but if you look at it, such a huge nation right and to cater to every person this is like so many people and it's difficult we are definitely getting there it's 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 a journey you know it can't happen process. rome wasn't built in a day it's a, it's a process now that we are aware we can uh, yeah. get there soon so i think that today we are talking about it openly i think that is something is i think one difficult. step at a time absolutely absolutely the more we talk you'll see a lot of people getting into cyber because there's such a huge requirement for cyber security professionals like there's just lack of uh, the right skill set and even if you have the right skill set finding the right job you know like you were you yeah. working in the place where your skill set is required is yeah. and when you talk like i earlier mentioned right, it's blue teaming there are more things like security architecture cloud security 
this is so much blockchain security oh, i yeah know. blockchain is a upcoming trend i mean in the market Absolutely. blockchain and is another thing that needs security with web 3.0 new security uh, uh, processes are coming into the picture so i mean there's so many things now on the internet that you need security for every freaking thing Absolutely. i mean um, bitcoins and you know the metaverse and everything that's happening around i think more cyber security professionals are needed i mean absolutely completely absolutely. so um what i very overworked all the time <laughs> i sorry i didn't hear you so i, I was just mentioning i, I seem like uh, burnout is a very common trend in cyber in general because you're just working on so many things all the time that you need a break <laughs> how is it um, like how is it working like you are a women working in the technical field like i'm really proud of you working in uh, this profession but you don't see a lot of uh, women working in this profession so how is the working environment and how do you feel as a women working with so many men around and you know how is it absolutely it's quite <laughs> empowering and i feel the fact that you know we bring in when we talk about feminism it's it's equality and uh, now we like we're all getting quite aware about it that cyber in general like i always spoke that it's not just technical you need to have those soft skills in place to be curious too and mm. i feel like i've worked with i don't know how many women and uh, so many like I, like in my previous organization i worked with a bunch of uh, people who just came out of college and you know most of them did not know anything about cyber and uh, i worked for them for a, approximately i think 3 or 4 months and i saw them growing immensely immensely mm. like you know just because of the soft skills they had so yeah you just can't compare like my, men bring a certain kind of flavor into organizations and women right. have a different kind of empowerment and flavors and you know soft skills that and even men yeah. have but it's it's a mix of both that so like you know just like that's how keep them have balanced absolutely so that sort of creativity and curiosity i feel uh, that that comes from women it's very empowering and same same applies to men as well like a lot of good do you think it's safer uh, to work in a uh, cyber profession like safer as in a sense where matlab uh, you're not dominated by the other gender and do you feel that this uh, this profession is going to that way where you know uh, equality is being at place so i like earlier you know when i started my career i used to see very few people working in cyber especially when you talk about tech, like being technical and on ground and even my dad used to tell me like what are you doing you're traveling all the time mm-hmm. i used to travel most of the times so i used to be in client locations and you know um, be in these it rooms and server rooms because i just started and like there was server rooms like minus 15 degrees celsius and uh, performing imaging activity there and i came out and i was sneezing for 20 minutes because it was so cold 20 minutes but i was just laughing it down and telling my dad he's like just change your do- job and do a desk job and you know like even my family was very reluctant on me doing it like th- there was a point where they were like keep traveling all the time and you know we're not sure if you're safe and especially you know yeah. how it's in india right so those factors did come in but i was so determined i was like you know what one thing i found that you know i'm like i really like it let's let just let me do it and there was a point where i was working 7 days a week too i shouldn't be glorifying it but i kind of yeah. did it because i was enjoying the process and mm-hmm. uh, it brought me where i am today and you know i'm able to stand up for myself and i know that you know not just for myself but for others also who are there in my yeah. company or who work with me and things like that and uh, yeah, obviously you are inspiring so many other women you know if you are getting into and this and I, you are being passionate about your work absolutely so. and i think on a daily basis i get inspired but all of the people i work with and you know come come across because you learn you pick up these small things from everyone you work with and so yeah. good right And, and I like the way you said seven days. I work for seven days, but then you said I should not glorify it. I, I feel like people should not glorify working seven days a week. I mean, oh, Dubai no. has four days a week um, work uh, situation. I feel, and we, I am quite jealous. Today is Saturday, and oh, it's so uh, anyway. government. <laughs> it's only applicable to government entities if you're working for a government body and not. So KPMG still has a KP. I work for KPMG in Dubai. It still has a five day work week. So we're still okay, working five days. That's sad. That's pretty sad. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Fine, yeah. 
Okay, okay. so with that, I think uh, we are coming to the end of our section. And oh, okay, before that, just there's one just slight question that I want to ask you. What if uh, somebody who does not get into the big four, what are the other uh, companies that you would uh, suggest to a, a person who has uh, done a cybersecurity um, course or a program but doesn't know where to apply for? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest... Like there are a lot of these new uh, budding startups also coming into the picture. And I personally, for one, highly recommend working for a startup because you work on so many different things because when you join a big organization, you getting that sort of visibility and responsibility and power. So with responsibility also comes like a huge workload, but uh, it also depends from, it's very subjective, right? Who wants to do how right. much? A lot of us like mm. to do comfortable jobs where we log off after four or six weeks. It depends on how mm. productive also you are. And productivity comes with how long you've worked for a certain yeah. time, right? In the initial days, I feel like we all have to hustle to know our shit. Yeah. As to be yeah. able to do something that we were doing in eight hours to do it in, you know, half an hour. It's a, it's mm. a, it's a journey. It's going to take some time. And mm -hmm. uh, that's how, that's kind of why I feel today that experienced people are paid more because they have, spend so much time you know learning and uh, being able to do it faster so it's, it's just yeah. a journey that you need to enjoy and if you could just repeat your question again i think i kind of went yeah so when you're <laughs> I, I i recollect it so <laughs> okay. talking about organizations i think there are like like a lot of and i, I would recommend working for a product-based company because uh, product-based because that, that's when you get to see the ground. So let's say we talk about database security. So you will actually be working on how to make it secure. When you're working in consulting, then like, you know, how I mentioned that you will kind of be an ER doctor. You won't be a specialist many a times. Like it's very difficult to be a specialist while you're a consultant because uh, it's, although it's required to be a specialist, but we're mostly okay. jack of all trades and master of none. But when you're working in a product-based company, you are an SME, you will know how exactly do you make this database secure. So, right. So, yeah, there are a lot of companies like that. I would not like to name one because, you know, I'm already working. Like, just. Uh, but, yeah, but you can. And you, I mean, uh, if you would not have been working there, then, you know, it's, it's not like you're recommending somebody to not come to KPMG. You, KPMG, everybody knows it's such a big company. So, it also, a, see, I feel. When we talk about companies, for example, you just just a uh, little uh, recommendation that I would good go tell people that don't look mm -hmm. for what company do you want to work for, look okay. for what people you want to work for, right? That's okay. more important because the company is not going to drive you or teach you anything. It's the people who right. work for. So it depends on like let's say you know you got hired by a certain people. Most likely person, most likely you're going to work with that person. If you believe yeah. that, you know, you kind of look forward to becoming a person like that, you should go ahead and work. And for that, you need to work with that person. So for that, you need to understand what are the different leaders and, you know, the kind of people who are there in the industry. And mm. so because of social media, I think LinkedIn or Twitter in general is a very good mm. place to uh, showcase what you learn on a daily basis and, you know, connect with the right people. And what yeah. I've done recently, especially on Twitter, is I've kind of curated my entire feed to have only InfoSec people. And mm. I don't have like a huge following. It's just like 50, 60 people. But they're all so good mm. that, you know, I, every time I open Twitter itself or LinkedIn in general, that I learn so much from my feed itself. Yeah. You are basically people. surrounding yourself with everything that you need you to, to see. Be. And not seeing anything junk that's not required to your brain, right? Exactly. I think that's your that's the way you're keeping keeping yourself clean. Yeah, yeah. That's, in your head. I think that's very much required because you need to focus. So a little little emphasis on having a vision board for yourself. It's it's like you know, very small, small practices. Again, going back to spirituality, maybe that to be mindful of what you're talking, whom you're talking to. This is very small thing. But having that sort of a vision for yourself that you know. Fine, you know, on a daily basis, I'm learning these things. But after after a while, not having timelines also, because timelines make it very, like, crazy in our head. Mm. That, you know, I want to eventually become that person. And every yeah. day that you wake up, 
you are that person this believe that you are that person and you will become that person i feel like oh my god <laughs> that was a great insight i would say that, that's true i, I mean, feel like you know and i i feel moving out of your hometown and you know being in a new place enables you to do that because you just wake up and you're like you know what i just want to be that person i will be that person so yeah and it it works just like uh, you just have to believe in yourself and keep working absolutely okay. so in the process it it's also not like you know every day is just happy and things like that there yeah. will be days where you're down there will be stressful days but you have to realize that you know you so having that vision again ha- journaling daily as to you know this is what i learned small small things being mindful mm-hmm. small like even if you are not learning something let's say yourself but you help someone mm-hmm. know something you know yeah. which might be a very yeah. small thing but you know it makes a huge impact on someone else completely These small small things help us grow eventually yeah. and uh, yeah i think these are the certain things it's very difficult also like you know for example like when i came here kind of stay all by myself it becomes difficult on the days i'm sick and things what like do you do on your bad days how do you deal with them <laughs> i think it's it's difficult you know because you're not with your family and i kind of yeah. try to talk to my mom and see what's up because there are always more problems and i feel like my problems are smaller <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way <laughs> to feel better <laughs> no i just like spend more time with people uh, and talk to people i mm. love maybe yeah and uh, one more thing that helps me a lot so i feel like you know as kids so so one very beautiful thing that i recently learned maybe just a year back and sure, i got sure we are excited to know <laughs> spirituality recently is uh, yeah. you know all our, all along in our life uh we keep changing we come across so many people but inherently there is something within us which remains the same okay. if you think okay. about it like there is yeah. one uh, voice inside us which remains the same no matter what, where you go what you become it's the same mm. you know leaving all your ego and all of those uh, uh voices around this is one small kid in you in all of us which yeah. remains and and it always says the same thing <laughs> always it it has its own values and that's kind of a soul when you think about it and it's very yeah. beautiful so i think something which helped me identify that you know this is what i want to do i i don't i still don't feel like you know this is all i want to do i really want to do much 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 more much more and, want to uh, keep growing absolutely and i feel what kind of helped me is to you know spend time with yourself and think about what 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 is that one thing that you know you like doing as a kid so i identified that you know i as a kid i used to like i i used to like reading a lot okay i'll just take a minute i'll just take a minute yeah okay anyway uh, we'll yeah. just wrap it up now we'll yeah. anyway wrap it up yes. it's i think we're very long this so, this one one last thing i think yeah. i want to talk about yeah. i learned recently hmm. so kind of spend uh, like you know quite some time meditating and stuff and i feel you know as much as it's glorified and made a trend on social media you just can't sit yeah. by yourself and learn it you need to have someone to teach you again the fact of guru coming in your life comes so like in every aspect you need a guru to you know tell you yeah i'm very grateful for the few people who kept telling me that you know learn it from someone you will not be able to learn but i was so stubborn like i used to be like no oh, i'll sit by myself and meditate that's how it works <laughs> but that's not possible uh, especially with my with my mind it always have so many thoughts coming up mm-hmm. that i cannot meditate on my own so there is this very beautiful thing about our mind and our body as to how it's different so our body uh, if you think about it to train yourself you need to spend effort like you know you need to mm. uh, put effort into it like go to the gym dress dress up into the gym outfit yeah. and gear and go and work out never and... have, like the idea of gymming anyway it, it's all effort which is required but when you talk about your mind the mind how it functions is it's effortless so when we talk like let's say i'm just going to give you an example i'll tell you sweet kriti don't think about a monkey for the next 5 minutes now i will keep on thinking about a monkey 
so you just keep thinking about a monkey so it's that's how it works it's effortless you know like it's very funny but that's how it works so the mind and the body are very different things first of all and you know the way we handle them like we spend a lot of time uh traveling outside and you know seeing people and learning from people but we barely spend any time and we are not actually yeah. able to go inwards and identify that you know who exactly are we uh okay. as people and what do we want to do we go by these definitions that people have of us but who exactly are you you need who to we are you. exactly inside and spend some time reminding yourself on a daily basis that this is who i am and this is what i want to do and not be you know just stay undeterred around and the very small small things but matter a lot and just one more thing i think i wanted to mention here was um, and i realized that you know i still like doing it so much and i feel like oh my god this is what i like to do so there's a, a concept of dharma that all of us are individuals the four type of individuals in general and few of us mm-hmm. like being guides few of our, few of us are you know very artistic teachers yeah artist Some artist so it's like four different classifications of what kind of personalities not to classify people but personalities mm-hmm. of people. Personality. and then if you identify like let's say i'm i'm uh, i realized that you know as a kid also i used to like reading a lot like i used to sit and learn and stuff and like i don't know i'm such a boring person but yeah mm-hmm. i used to do that and i used to take my notebook and go to the entire family everyone and be like okay do you remember what i taught you yesterday and i used to take tests such a boring person to be but <laughs> that's that's what i like i used to teach so i taught everyone in the family whatever i was learning you know a lot of people like to talk about it and you know that's how they share i mean knowledge is something that people like to share you learn more when you're sharing actually when sharing. you just keep it to yourself uh, it's yeah. limited but when you talk about it to other people you get their inputs and then you improve whatever you yes, have so i realized that you know this is what i like doing and then i i started helping others also in whatever i learned a little bit i try to make sure that you know i train this one person that helps me have one or two or, or i don't know how many more people but just uh, to to know who who you are you know at the end of the day yeah. what is that one thing that gives joy to you so i'm also planning completely completely it was very beautiful talking to you bhavya like we got to know about each and everything that we wanted to ask you and more than that you also taught us a lot of and i think you shared a lot of thing about spirituality i mean i think a lot of people still have to you know explore i would say uh, their spiritual journey yeah. and i think they should they should Absolutely. definitely and i am the person who is you know on the on the process of maybe you know uh, that's that it happens to each individual at their own pace of time i believe on that very Absolutely. much you will not um, get to it unless like the right time comes so there's also comes. one beautiful thing that i i love okay i'm just going to i just keep talking about it yeah. <laughs> so the, the whole concept of karma right uh, these yeah. are all like very uh, spiritual talks that i'm talking about but uh, mm-hmm. when the moment you balance your good and right karma uh, that's when you kind of start on the journey and just start Dharm, you are karma karma Okay. The good and the bad. When you kind of mobilize it or not mobilize it, but equal, uh, like you know, equalize it. That uh, is kind of impaired. when you actually get started. So it takes people a lot of lives to get started, and you know, be aware of this too. Yeah. It's, Beautiful. It's I mean, we should uh, get to learn more about spirituality with you. I think the next session will be about spirituality with you. <laughs> well, thanks for joining yeah. me. and with this on this note we would like to end this interview and if you have more questions and if you want uh, to ask bhavya about anything i think you guys can connect to her on instagram i think that's a good place to get connected with instagram twitter anyway linkedin instagram yeah so we'll put down her linkedin uh, uh, link and you guys can you know if you got you need to ask anything more then you can surely go ahead so okay we are Thank signing you. off bye bye <laughs>